Namaste angels. This is going to be the full moon in Aquarius reading beginning with today, August 3rd, when the full moon occurred, happened this morning at 11.59 a.m., 11 degrees Aquarius. So tomorrow at 11.32 p.m., Mercury, the ruler of the signs of Gemini and Virgo, enters Leo, zero degrees Leo. On August 7th at 11.21 a.m., Venus enters Cancer, zero degrees Cancer. Venus, the ruler of the signs of Libra, Taurus, and again, Gemini. So both of um, Gemini's rulers making an entrance into a new energy this week. August 11th at 7.14 a.m., Vesta enters Leo, zero degrees Leo. And also on August 11th at 12.45 p.m., we'll experience the quarter moon, 19 degrees Taurus, August 12th at 11.48 p.m. Saturn will be quintile Chiron, 27 degrees Capricorn and 9 degrees Aries. So it's the Saturn that will be located 27, which equals 9 degrees Capricorn. Saturn is um, the ruler of the sign of Capricorn and currently located there retrograde. So it will be there. And Aries is also... Um, Aries, the ruler of the sign, I mean, Aries, which is ruled by Mars, is located in Chiron, the asteroid, nine degrees Aries. Um, August 15th at 10.27 a.m., Uranus, the ruler of the sign of Aquarius, for which this reading is, goes retrograde as well, 10 degrees Taurus, where it's currently located and has been for over a year now and will be for like another six and a half, seven years. And then lastly, on August 18th at 10.42 p.m., the next major moon phase, the new moon, 26 degrees Leo. All right, so knowing that, we're going to go to the almanac quickly. My new moon readings, I go straight to the reading, but my full moon readings, I like to stop by the almanac and see what it has to say um, about from the native tribes, what they have to say about it. So for this one, it's called the full sturgeon moon, sturgeon as in the fish. August full moon will appear on the night of Sunday, August 2nd, before reaching peak illumination at 1159 a.m., Eastern Time on Monday, August 3rd. On either of these nights, look toward the southeast after sunset to catch a glimpse of the sturgeon moon rising. Not too long after August's full moon, it will be time to keep an eye out for the annual Perseid meteor shower, which lasts from late July to late August. The meteors will reach their maximum in the hours just before dawn, like while it's still dark, between August 11th and August 13th. The moon will be in its last quarter phase at this time on August 11th, so the meteors may be washed out to some extent by the moon's brightness. August full moon was traditionally called the Sturgeon Moon because the giant sturgeon of the Great Lakes and Lake Champlain were most readily caught during this part of summer. Other names for this moon include the full green corn moon, signaling that the corn was nearly ready for harvest. The wheat cut moon, the moon when all things ripen, and the blueberry moon. The tradition of naming moons is rich in history. Here at the Farmer's Almanac, we have a long honored tradition of following the Native American moon names and the folklore of those who came before us. I do, I do as well. We follow the full moon names that were used during Native American and colonial times to help to track the seasons, usually by the Algonquin people who were prominent along the Atlantic coast and into the interior along the St. Lawrence River and around the Great Lakes. What is a sturgeon? This, these prehistoric looking fish have been traced back to around 136 million years ago and many people call them living fossils. Well, that's interesting because I was shown that they trace back to around 245 million years ago, which equals 11, and that there are 27 different species of them. Um, 
I was showing some other numbers too. There was something about four. I think they're put into four different categories, the 27 different species. And I was going to ask you guys for help, actually, to try to figure out what that might be about or, or what, why I was made to focus on the sturgeon and how it might relate other than the nine and the 11, right? And I said 27 species, nine, 245, 11. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, but this is 136 million, which is a 19. So that is also interesting. Uh, in any case, continuing on, females require around 20 years to start reproducing, and they can only reproduce every four years. Oh, maybe that's what I was shown about the four. However, they can live up to 150 years each. Throwing a six in there, like mother. This is the mother, it's the female. Today, there are about 29 species worldwide. See, I was shown 27, but maybe there's 29, including the lake sturgeon found in the Great Lakes. They have evolved in size from the size of a bass to monster sturgeon, the size of a Volkswagen. The lake sturgeon is quite rare today due to intense overfishing in the 19th century. There's another 19. Also, pollution and damage to their habitat. Um, I guess the 11s could be tied into the fact that the Aquarius full moon is at 11 degrees. There may be more to it than that. I, I don't know. I felt like I was made to focus. Maybe I missed something. So that's why I was going to ask you guys for uh, what you thought about it anyway. Um, I felt like I was being made to focus on the fish itself, the sturgeon. And I'm trying to figure out why that was important other than what I just told you. Anyway, the best days in August, according to this, um, the Native American tribes based on the moon, are um, the 7th, 8th, the 7th, 8th, and 9th for cutting hay, if anybody's going to be doing that, the 5th, 9th, and 27th to quit smoking, and the 5th and the 6th for cutting hair in order to slow down its growth. I don't know anybody who wants to do that, but I, I can imagine why Natives would have wanted to maybe. Moon folklore. Clothes washed for the first time in the full moon will not last long. If you glimpse the new moon over your right shoulder, you'll have good luck. To have a project prosper, start it during the new moon. And babies born a day after the full moon enjoy success and endurance. Lastly, from my own thinking, um, uh, my, my idea of the overall theme of this full moon is about the Leo Aquarius or Aquarius Leo axis. So currently the sun is in Leo and Aquarius is Leo's opposite sign. So for example, I'm a Leo rising. That's why my moon is Aquarius. Did I mention that I'm an Aquarius moon? Well, yeah, this is my moon. So, but the reason for that or the way that, that the, re the way it happens, the reason it happens that way is because they're opposite signs, they're mirror signs. So um, if one is your rising, the other will be um, your moon quite often. It does not have to be. Um, I'm sorry, the one is your rising, the other will be your south node, not your moon. My, my Aquarius is my moon and my south node. Um, so yeah, that's why I have that going on. Anyway, back to the axis, because that's what I meant to focus on, not my, not my natal chart. So we've talked about how um, the sign of Aquarius represents freedom and humanitarianism. It's all about caring about what's happening at large, right? The collective at large. Um, sometimes to the extent that you become like a martyr, like you put yourself at risk uh, on, on behalf of other people or everyone else, right? So Leo's the opposite. Leo, I've talked about before too, and I said, you know, full disclosure, I'm a Leo rising, so I have nothing against the sign of Leo, and you know, you could say I'm one myself in part, but the truth is the truth, right? Leo is known more for like um, arrogance and, and, and greed, um, selfishness rather than the selflessness of Aquarius. And again, that has to do with them being opposite mirror axes, you know? So the idea now, I think, um, with this moon is going to be all about trying to find the balance in the middle. Um, 
not being so selfless to the extent that we do become martyrs, right? Um, and also not just focusing on, our, focusing on ourselves and being selfish and greedy because that's going to backfire, I feel. That's going to, you may get something by being greedy, uh, you know, and slick and going about it the wrong way. But it, those, uh, it's going to be like ill-gotten gains and you'll have to pay for it. It'll, it's going to come back to you to like bite you in the ass through karma. So finding balance in the middle of um, being able to both give and receive, but in a healthy way, in a healthy way, and not focusing just on oneself, being considerate of other people, thinking about other people. Maybe even if, you, if we narrow it down to your own family, friends, your own relationships, but um, whereas normally Leo might not think about other people, might not consider other people. And in a, even though they're part of the equation, Leo's focused on themselves, very self-centered. So finding a way to pull away from that, even though we're being drawn to it, because again, the sun is in Leo and other signs are, are going to be in Leo. Um, Mercury's entering, as I just read. So trying to find a way to like pull away from that uh, and from ego and from pride. And this probably ties into the readings that I did over the weekend. I talked about Soulmate Day, um, which is the, um, the 6th of August. I talked about the Lion's Gate, which is all this month. It began the, uh, the last week of July. Um, many believe it goes some believe it ends this week after the 8th, but many also believe based on the um, celestial event that it goes through to August 22nd. I've talked about this before, which is the last day of Leo or the first day of Virgo, depending upon what calendar you're using, and happens to also be um, the feast day of the Queenship of Mary, which is a celebration of the fact that she is a mother. You know, it's honoring her as a mother and a female. And I think that may come into play, too. Of course, the moon is also female and feminine. Um, but that's not necessarily where I was going with, with, with this part of the talk. My point was to um, focus on or give some thought to how can you balance the needs, your own needs, Right, as an individual, with that of your relations. So your mate, your friends, your family, your co-workers maybe, um, and or the collective at large. It's also about, because again, it's opposite axis. So in order to rid yourself of ego or to become balanced, what do we have to do, right? Inner work. So it's about inner work, but it's also about outer work and finding the balance between those two. So I think that that's my take on the moon. Uh, you can look it up and see what it says, what astrologers say and all that. I, I give you what comes to me and what I piece together that makes sense based on um, what I've been shown and what I know about the different zodiac signs and the celestial bodies to the extent that I, that I know about them. You know what I mean? So I, I don't consider myself an astrologer, but I know about, I know, uh, um, I think a, a fair amount about um, celestial bodies and about the zodiac signs. And I just add that to being a psychic and intuitive and then <laughs> and squeeze it all together and give you my thoughts on what I feel an event's going to be. So on that note, let's go to the cards and see if they agree or if messages relating to any of what I just said pop up. I'm using three oracle decks here for the um, love reading and the general reading, which I would also love if you watched. Um, I think for the full picture and all of that and an understanding of Maybe some of the things that I've said that I, I'm not going to go into detail talking about here. I probably went into detail talking about them in the general reading. Um, I use three tarot decks in that reading and in the love reading. So I'm using, I'm not using the tarot tonight. I'm using only um, the Ascendant Masters deck beginning with right, 
and Thought, with this full moon behind him. Thought also representation of Mercury. So uh, that has meaning for me. Again, Mercury enters the sign of Leo tomorrow. Um, ruler of the signs of Gemini and Virgo. Gemini, which is currently the North Node, speaking about mirror signs and axes. Um, our, our mirror sign is Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is currently the South Node and Gemini is what would be called the True North Node. Um, right could be straightforward. It could really be about writing something, letter, email, um, your thoughts down. Sometimes with the full moon, I'll write my things I want to release down and I'll set them on fire. Um, this can also be coming up because of just communication in general, especially with met with Mercury entering Leo. And again, I went into detail about what that's all about, what that transit is all about on the general reading. So from my surrender deck, what do we need to let go of? What should we be surrendering um, or surrendering to? In this case, uh, is the body, wisdom of your body. Listen to your body's messages about a person or situation. If you feel physically drained or uncomfortable, be cautious. If you're energized and happy, move forward. And that may be, um, and it's for everybody, but I would say especially Leo's, because when I did your um, astrological reading biweekly, there was a person that was like a low-key hater. They, on the surface, they seem like a friend or somebody or family member or something, somebody that cares about you, and they don't. They're jealous. Um, they don't necessarily wish for you to do well and, and succeed. Also upright, surrender obsessive thinking. If you're obsessing about a person or situation, turn the dilemma over to spirit. Doing so will help you to bring clarity or even to solve the problem. And lastly, surrender your need to always be right. Give others the gift of letting them be right. Be yielding, not rigid. This will help you to resolve conflicts and to improve your relationships. From the um, numerology deck, lastly, we have financial discipline. And I think this is about, um, this card came up, I, I guess the, maybe the last time I used it was the cancer. Oh, probably the second Cancer, new moon, so that rare event is probably when I used the numerology deck last and the financial discipline card came up. Um, it, it says that you need to work on your relationship with money. So this can be part of your inner and outer work, right? It doesn't necessarily mean like um, that you don't have money or that you're not capable of making money or that you won't make any money during this period. It doesn't mean any of that. Uh, it just means... Because the universe, so this is maybe thinking about the collective too, as well as yourself, right? And finding balance. Because the universe is so abundant, you are so abundant. And you, if you affirm that and believe it, this is part of the law of attraction, how you bring money to yourself. But then we want to take it a step further. I'm not just abundant. You know, I am stable. I'm secure. My needs are met. I want for nothing. And so it's about d developing that sort of relationship with money and the universe so that you continue to attract it and be able to actually save some. And maybe because of the times that we're going through nationally or even globally. I just read also that Europe is extending their ban on not letting Americans in. So I don't know what's going on over there, but I guess they're still suffering as well. All right, so um, since this deck is small... I'll give it another little shuffle in front of you. Opening first to Twin Flame and Angus. Thought, right? Teacher, which for me is always, always feels like a combination between the Hierophant and the Hermit. Go back to Thought and Right. And lastly, focus upon your strengths, Apollo. Um, with this numerology deck, we'll do a little bit of the same. Opening first to spiritual partnership. Isn't that funny? I, the, the first card we opened to on this deck was Twin Flame, and then the first one on this deck, spiritual partnership, which I think is the same thing. 
spiritual partnership. Two, patience. Of course, twos also represent partnership. And lastly, ten, karmic completion. Perfect for a full moon. These I don't have to. All right, let's start with, I might use the, the tarot decks too then, because I was thinking I was going to use three here. Let's start with these. And see what what we have in store for the for us all, uh, beginning with divine being or cu or couple. So you can look for your twin flame relationship, your soulmate relationship, or your romantic situation, or as yourself as an individual. Recent past, near future, masculine's higher self because my viewership is mostly feminine, whether male or female. It's mostly female, too, though. Blocks um, or challenges to individual or shared progress. What the feminine can do to help herself in that case. What the masculine can do to help himself. What the universe would have either or both do to help themselves and even wants to help us with. But we have to, again, have to affirm because we have free will and the outcome. Divine being a couple. Balance, <laughs> career and home life, says Isis. After I was talking about ba balance so many times. So, yeah, it makes sense to me that we're starting from that place. Recent past, though. Take charge of this situation, says Moses. Near future. Go now. Serapis Bay. Masculine's higher self. Drink more water. So this is about ascension. The masculine, um, very likely during this period, going through some sort of increase and in ascension, definitely drink water because you can become dehydrated very easily when you're experiencing ascension. Blocks um, to individual or shared progress. Priorities. So not prioritizing what you need to do and taking care of it. And this is funny because I talked about the soulmate day too. King Solomon is who began the soulmate day. If you watch my general reading, I talk about it a little bit. Um, what the feminine can do to help herself to get her priorities in order. Wow. This is that individual part, right? It's freedom. So like taking care of her and it's right here under balancing career and home life. So like balancing, you're nurturing yourself and taking care of people. You got to break away. You got to prioritize yourself. Two, feminine. What the masculine can do to help himself. You're seeing this situation accurately. Trust your um, intuition trust your, you know, what, if you've already made a decision about something, you got something in your mind, don't, um, you know, like debate yourself about whether you're right. Believe that you are, says Horus. And I like that there's another full moon in this picture, like the one with thought. Horus also brings in that um, Virgo energy, some more Mercury too. What the universe would have each or both archetypes both feminine and masculine to do to help themselves and even wants to help us with with the first affirm because we have free will follow your heart says saint francis and the outcome detaching from drama this palace athena so i think this is saying um i mean it's pretty straightforward but to explain what happened here at the end. When you prioritize yourself and look to fulfill your own needs in reason and in balance, right? Not in a selfish way, um, by following your heart and the guidance that you receive. You also pull away from all those people and entities and energies that were trying to force you to do otherwise. So you, in the same, in the same process, you kill two birds with one stone because you also detach, detach from drama. I'm gonna further clarify these 
with the numerology deck. So here we go with those. So we just shuffled these, right? We have an overall energy here of karmic completion. Same placements, a divine being a couple, recent past, near future has two. Masculine's higher self blocks the individual shared progress, what the feminine can do to help herself, what the masculine can, what the universe would have us both do, and even wants to help us with, we have to firm because we have free will and the outcome. Um, divine being a couple. Physical activity. And this can definitely go with balancing your home life or your, your personal life and making sure that you fit time in for yourself. Near, um, recent past, a top take charge of the situation. Follow your dreams. Near future, a top go now. We have two cards. The first is manifestation. And the second is self-discipline. So again, this is kind of like another way of saying financial discipline, right? It wants us to manifest and to be abundant, but also within reason and doing it the proper way. But do it right away. Go now. Like, stop wasting time. Um, not any, any more days where you're not, like, saving for yourself. Because um, it requires action, right? Prayer, manifestation is the same thing as prayer. And there's that saying in the scriptures, like prayer without works is dead. It's just the same thing, like manifestation requires action. So we, um, we speak those words over our lives, like the, the ones that I mentioned before about the relationship with money. And I'm abundant. The universe is abundant. Therefore, I'm abundant. I attract money. It likes me. You know, I'm also secure and stable and all that, right? Um, then I have to take action to make sure that that actually happens. Also, like I got to do my part too. Like maybe I set aside, I made $10, I take $1 and I put that aside for myself. I put it in the drawer, I put it in the bank or whatever. So do that. And that may be enabling you also to follow your dreams. Or since this was, this comes earlier, maybe the decision to follow your dreams now um, opens your eyes to your need to maybe be a little bit more fiscally like savvy. Masculine's higher self. A top drink more water in his ascension. Also music. So I think not only um, ascension, but maybe specifically an upgrade in terms of like um, audio, you know, be like clear audience. And you may receive messages through music or you may, um, if you are musically inclined yourself, you may find your, your, physical gifts in that regard becoming stronger so you're playing better you're singing better all of this this week or next two weeks blocks to individual or shared progress atop priorities rebirth so this is allowing in order to have rebirth you have to allow something to die so it's like what's been blocking you not letting go of one thing and starting anew with fresh energy being sort of trying to avoid the transition Maybe because you haven't been prioritizing yourself. So, what the feminine can do to help herself, though, to fix that atop um, freedom is perseverance. They do say that the first rule of um, protecting oneself is like um, self preservation. So, like, persevere, like, winning in that regard. Here's another four, too. I think the fours are going to be important. Continuing to not like letting, not letting yourself down. Continuing to focus until you make it. That's what persevering is. Keep pushing. What the masculine can do to help himself, and it is nature. This could. I'm. I'm I. My first thing was mother energy. I mean, it, it could be very straightforward and literal, meaning like spending time outside and stuff. But my first thing was mother energy that popped into my head. So, um, but maybe whatever it pops into your head first when you when you see this, because you're seeing the situation accurately according to Horace. Masculine. 
Maybe there's a situation with your mother that you need to heal. It's here under rebirth. So maybe it's like talking about who the person who birthed you. Oh, so there's something, there's some sort of connection there. What the uh, universe wants to help us with and would have us both to work on is forgiveness. A top follow your heart. So this could be forgiving yourself. So that way you let go of like um, negative emotions against oneself and self judgments like pride, ego, which you talked about, um, the inability to forgive, right? We turn that around. Now we can forgive guilt, blame, letting those things go. And that will allow us to follow our heart because those things block you from following your heart. You know, if you got like your hands folded and you're, you know, you're mad, big mad and prideful. You're not going to follow your heart. You're not going to apologize when you say, well, they should be apologizing to me, right? Um, this allows you to let all of that go. And it also allows, I, I always talk about, sometimes we're not going to get a chance to physically apologize or to physically accept an apology. But this, um, when we release it from ourselves, it allows us to accept the apologies we're never going to get. And the outcome. Atop detached from drama is three creativity. And this is a, a, like a mother energy too. Um, in the tarot, Major Arcana card three, for example, is the Empress. Athena's the Empress, you know, or a Empress, a goddess. She's also wearing yellow, like this card. I'm, I'm, again, feeling something very strong about mother, mother, sword. Um, but on its own, this card, uh, creativity, is about abundance and using your creative means, maybe something like music, in order to bring about abundance in your own life. And I talked about that, too either in the general or the love or and or the love and possibly some of the astrological readings as well. I think we have a little time for me to go around one more time. So I do have the tarot decks here. I'll go ahead and use them uh, beginning with, we have the two of winter. So the two of winter or swords is a card that's about, it's, it's about what we've been talking about. Like, you know what you want to choose, right? You're seeing the situation accurately. You know what you're meant to do. But because you want to be a people pleaser or, yeah, it's usually what somebody else is going to think or say about it, detached from drama. Because you want to be a people pleaser, you don't make a decision. You don't move forward. You don't prioritize yourself. You don't do what it is. You don't follow your heart, right? Um, procrastination and worrying about what others will think is blocking you from making a decision. If you're torn between your own desires and someone else's, follow your inner guidance. Also, upright, the Prince of Winners, so the Knight of Swords. Get ready for progress to speed up. This situation requires you to choose logic and intellect over emotion and to make your decisions quickly. So we started out with a decision that needs to be made and then this energy that says, let's, let's get it done. So like, go now, like this says here, and prioritize yourself, priorities. Also, the two of pentacles can be about the need to make a decision as well as balance. Right. This is about juggling two, you know, two different things, at least um, finding time for your work and play yourself and others. You may be under stress because of multiple jobs or too many responsibilities for one person to manage. It's important to balance your work and your personal life, just like Isis said here, and to bring a spirit of fun to all you do. Two of um, pentacles, like, like I said, can have to do with making a decision too, usually about earthly matters. So like the amount of hours that you work or whether you work or not, how many jobs you work, if you're um, fitting time in for friends, family, romantic interests, all that kind of stuff. Um, next, also upright, major arcana card, 14, balance or temperance in the traditional tarot, which represents the sign of Sagittarius. The need for balance and moderation, cooperation and compromise. Wait for perfect timing. Um, I promise you I shuffled all these, but, but, you know, ahead of time and um, had no idea they were going to fit our spread. 
I'm glad they do. Okay, so temperance can also be about restoration, recovery, being made whole, where something was lost or taken from you, it's restored, you get it back. Um, it doesn't mean you get the exact thing back, but again, you get made whole. So, you know, somebody was greedy um, and they, Leo energy, right? And they took a hundred dollars that wasn't theirs. It was yours. They didn't care when they took it. They just took it. So you're short the hundred dollars. But then you're, you know, doing your work during the day and somebody has, here's a nice tip for you. And you open up the tip and it's a hundred dollars. So it might, it might not be that instant, that kind of instant karma and recovery, but that's what um, temperance is about for me. And, and one, that's one of the things it's about. It's also about like where you had differences with somebody, being able to get past them. So it could be tied to this, allowing you to follow your heart and to, you know, seek forgiveness or to issue forgiveness to other people because you're going to look past the differences. They don't matter anymore. You realize they never mattered. Probably. Um, we thought it was a big deal that, you know, I'm white and you're black, but now we agree that it's not. And so we can come together. Thought it was a big deal that, you know, I'm only 30 and you're 50. But now we decide it's not a big deal. So we're going to fix it. We thought it was a big deal. I'm Jewish and Muslim. And now we say it's not. And we can, there's ways that we can come together and figure it out. I eat meat, you're vegan, whatever the case is. Um, then we have the Ten of Swords, which signifies possibly that there had been, at least at one time, some kind of betrayal or difficulty, struggle through which one or more people, right, as I said, divine being or couple, so the, the individual or the couple was going through. It's the end, though, of that whatever that was, the end of a difficult situation. Embrace the change and expect things to get better now. Somebody may even be recovering from an addiction. In the reading about the moon, they mentioned the days that it was a good day to, um, what days it's good to stop smoking on. Also upright, the queen of fire, queen of wands. She is confident, warm, intelligent, and graceful. She's also a Leo, Sagittarius or Aries, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Stretch your wings and fly like freedom, maybe. Don't underestimate yourself. You can persevere. Assert your independence and creativity. I said I was feeling mother energy, right? This is like divine mother too. In the tarot, this is the representation of the divine feminine. Also upright, the nine of water, nine of cups is the last one. <laughs> Um, all about wish fulfillment, prayers being answered, wishes being granted, dreams coming true. So think about your manifestation. If you put the words out and you put the action to them, you should be successful because that nine of cups also came out in both readings that I did over the weekend. Um, you know what, as a matter of fact, let me, all those cards that I just looked at, let's put them in different places. Okay. A little from here, a little from there. And I just do it this way because it's, it's two decks. So it's too many cards for me to try to um, like shuffle traditionally. So we put some in the middle, some on top, some upside down, some right side up, whatever. No rhyme or reason to it. Just so you can see they're mixed up. Fresh energy. And now, we now have the Seven of Swords as an overall energy. This is another card that can be about loss or theft even. Um, and I tend to summarize it by calling it the, I say that it represents the energy of joy stealing. So somebody takes your actual stuff, your physical stuff, right? Tangible stuff that takes your joy away from you. That, that upsets you. But this, is, this can be energetic too. And you have the ability to steal your own joy by causing yourself to miss out on opportunities because you lack confidence. You're being, you're not taking risks or you're being again, prideful or full of ego or something. So you're not following your heart. This guides you against that. It can also be an indication that somebody from your past is going to return to your life. 
Caution will help you to avoid the loss of valuables, including non-material resources such as time or peace of mind, which is like the most important. Be aware of the results of your actions as well as what others might be doing behind your back. Remember I talked about low-key haters, people that don't really want to see you well, do well, so they're, they're throwing like salt in the game. That's the only card upright, so we'll get to back to the spread. So again, divine being a couple, now here, top physical activity and balancing work and home life. It's another seven of swords. So we have one as our overall energy and we have one here. That's why I like to use all the tarot decks because um, the cards like to repeat. Plans that need revision. More going on than meets the eye and poor timing. You got to... If you have to work, redo, re 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 revise your plans in order to work yourself in or work physical activity in, like don't um, not do your exercise, for example, if that's something you want to do because you're busy pleasing everybody else. That's that selflessness to the extent of being a modder. And we've got to find the balance. Uh, recent pass, atop follow your dreams and take charge of the situation. The aid of earth, skilled work is rewarded, learning all there is to know about a topic and maybe going back to school. This card for me is all about reaping what you've sown. Where you put the effort and work in is from where you get the outcome. It's another eight too. So I'm starting to make note in my mind of all the numbers that are coming out. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but with the eights, um, some of these could be connected, of course, to the 8-8 portal or Lionsgate portal. Uh, near future. A top manifestation, self-discipline, and go now. I picked up two. One is the ace of... I picked up two, just like I did before. The ace of air, ace of swords. Brilliant new ideas and inspirations. Seeing the truth of a situation and a challenging beginning. Maybe that working on your um, relationship with abundance perhaps specifically money, you know, you could get off to a bumpy start, but you'll get to, it's a, it's a start, right? You get off to a start and it's another knight of swords. He is intelligent, decisive, idealistic, and tireless. Events that occur with great speed, remember, go now. You don't really have that much time. Take time to carefully review your options. You can come up with creative solutions. The Knight of Air is a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. If you may have to make some sort of decision quickly about um, finances or something you've been trying to manifest. Might not be finances, something else. Or you may be awaiting a decision, and then when you receive the information that you receive, you're going to have to take some sort of action too, and it's going to be like rather quickly. Maybe involving an air sign. Masculine's higher self atop music and drink more water is the princess of spring, energetic, outgoing, optimistic, and creative. Creative opportunities, like again, music or something, are fluttering your way. Personal growth, ascension, and broaden horizons, ascension, will spark fresh and original ideas. The Princess of Spring is a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, or someone likened to those traits or attributes if it's an actual person in your life. I think it could very well be Jupiter, the um, okay. god and planet of karma, luck, growth, expansion that's coming through in the form of the Page of Wands. Blocks the individual or shared progress. The Two of Fire. Two of Wands. So this is the soulmate or twin flame or divine union card of the tarot. Um, it's also about faith. Twos are about faith. Twos are about balance. So all of those are potentially what you were um, not prioritizing and, and what has been causing you to be blocked. You've come into your own. New partnerships or contracts continue to move forward. What the feminine can do to help herself in addition to perseverance and freedom. Ace of water, something emotionally fulfilling for you. A fresh start for you. This fills your heart with joy. 
and happiness. Falling in love or the resurgence of a relationship, maybe this divine union relationship, this soulmate, this twin flame, maybe on the six, because I'm a, in the love reading, I did a reading, a spread rather, specifically on soulmate day, which is again, August 6th. Um, spiritual growth, enhanced intuition, so the feminine could be going through some upgrades herself, maybe even a new home. What the masculine can do to help himself, seven of earth, be patient. And you know, it's it's tied with this nature thing too. A lot of earth energy for the masculine. Seeds well planted. A temporary pause in action. You may feel like nothing's happening. But if you do get that feeling, it's unnecessary worry. Spend some time maybe again in nature, very literally um, meditating so that you can see what you're meant to see. And then when you see it, again, trust it because Horace says you're seeing the situation accurately. So that'll tell you if you need to take action or not. What the universe would have each or both of us do and even wants to help us with, but we have to first affirm because they have free will, is a fresh start. Major Arcana card zero, the dreamer or the fool in the traditional tarot. But in this deck in particular, um, feels like Mercury to me. Always, This card represents the planet Mercury, again, which enters Leo this week, where, us, where the sun is, uh, ruler of the signs of Gemini and Virgo. A leap of faith. Follow your dreams, which we also saw here and here is follow your heart because that's going to lead to unexpected opportunities and the outcome atop creativity and detached from drama. The Knight of Cups, emotional, romantic, enthusiastic and contemplative, falling in love or wedding proposals, the need to balance emotions and an invitation to a social event. Because you follow your heart, because you trust your intuition and go after what it is you want. Again, you too are filled with joy and happiness. It may be connected to a romantic situation, but it might not. This can just be about you feeling emotional and, you know, and really positive about something that you've been trying to manifest. The Knight of Cups is also often someone who's returning to your life, like the Seven of Swords. Um, Maybe an ex or something coming back to rekindle the love. Maybe again, the soulmate, the twin flame, divine union partner. Very possibly a Cancer, Scorpio or Pisces or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Could definitely be some water and air hookups, maybe fire. And further advice for each archetype. I'm going to try to get one from the other deck as well. And from here, and from here, from the Ascendant Masters, see the other person's point of view. So this again may allow us to apologize or to accept someone's apology by considering their perspective and what might have happened between us. Feminine for us, work your magic, says St. Germain. So this is like the magician, which is more Gemini energy. Um, but it's also about manifestation, right? It's telling you, you have the tools to bring about whatever it is you want to bring about in your life. For the masculine, we got another seven, just like up here said that you were going to go through some sort of personal growth, ascension, um, maybe be gifted by Jupiter with growth and expansion. Personal growth is your advice card here. And it's a number seven. Seven represents God. Uh, in numerology, in supreme math, in um, angel numbers, just, just about everywhere. <laughs> um, feminine, our card, love partnership. And this looks like a love partnership to me with the Knight of Cups there. And with the Ace of Cups here for us. Because that was for the feminine too. From the other tarot deck, to the masculine, the King of Spring, King of Wands. He's inspiring, dramatic, ambitious and wise. Now's your moment to step up into a leadership role. Don't back away from the spotlight as your plans will be successful as long as you stay focused on the big picture. The King of Spring, like the page over here, um, he's one half of this two of fire. The, we saw the queen earlier, she's the other half. Um, he is a Leo, Sagittarius or Aries, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. From the same deck to the feminine, it's another Ace of Swords. Remember, there was one here in the near future. We got our own, too. 
Implementation of your brilliant new idea may get off to a rocky start, but keep going. Perseverance. The challenges will help you to refine your plan and to reshape your goals into something even better. And you have the tools to do so because you got this magician energy. <laughs> and lastly, to the masculine, the two of cups, a relationship that continues to grow closer. Forgiveness and the positive resolution of a conflict detached from drama. For the feminine, the six of air, six of swords. Things are looking up. It's the end of a difficult situation. And we may even be taking a trip, and this could be actual travel. If it's not um, like literal movement, then it's metaphoric movement, growth, expansion, moving forward, things are better. You're sort of out of the woods, and the worst is behind you. I hope you guys have enjoyed our Aquarius um, full moon reading. I just realized all the air energy that came out here, the two aces of swords, the two knights of swords, um, that's that Aquarius energy which was making its way through, ending on the Six of Swords. Very nice. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, please um, like the video. Give it a thumbs up. If you don't mind sharing it, uh, commenting. If you're not yet a subscriber, considering becoming one by hitting both the subscribe button and the bell button. All of those things I greatly appreciate. Thanks again. Namaste.